PK had the nerve to tell Dorit, I was the global entrepreneur. I brought you up and you made me feel less than so many times. Sir, what are you bragging about? Your home is in foreclosure due to millions of dollars in unpaid gambling debts and money you didn't pay the IRS. So what did you give Dorit? Okay, I got a lot to say about this. I have, mm, for some reason, PK. Woo. Mm -mm. All right, let's just get into it. But before I do, if you are new here, hello, welcome to She's Speaking with Emily Hanks. I'm Emily. I recap your favorite reality TV shows. And every Sunday, 10 a.m. PT on YouTube, I go live to recap the week's entertainment news. So if you are not already, please subscribe, follow along. And if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, and let's get into it. All right, let's put a pin in the PK conversation for now, because I want to talk first about the Kyle and Dorit situation. I don't like Kyle's energy. This season, she's got so far this energy of, you're lucky I'm here. And I don't care for that very much. I don't like that vibe. So when she left, and then we see that she's going to be storming out at another point. Also, hold on, this is such a side note. Well, not really. But Kyle keeps doing interviews where she's like, I've never done that. I've never walked out before. I've never left filming. I'm like, I feel like you've done that quite often at the finales. We saw it in season eight where she storms out of Dorit's fashion event uh, because no one was being honest. And I know she's done it before. I know she's done it another time. So I, I, anyway. But the con what they're upset with each other about or what Kyle is upset about is confusing to me. So season 13 started filming in February of 2023. Then, and we saw how that season played out for Kyle and Dorit. Then BravoCon was November 2023. And that is where Kyle got so mad at Dorit, which Kyle claims there's more to it that's not being shown. I don't know. Um, but Kyle was upset with the way Dorit was acting in that game. And then allegedly, Dorit said that Kyle was just putting on the tears when brought, when they talked about Mauricio. Now, Dorit didn't outwardly deny that. She just shook her head and said, I knew this was going to happen. That's such bullshit. Because Dorit thinks that when the issues occurred, started in what would have been December then, because she goes on Watch What Happens Live, Dorit does, in December and sa and answers the question, how has your relationship changed since Kyle became friends with Morgan? That is what Dorit is convinced made Kyle mad. They weren't on good terms, in my opinion, going into season 13. There was a, a tension, a distance, I'm trying to remember, did they have any conversations during the season? I can't even really recall. But how strange that, like, something, honestly, okay, I was going to say something so minor. But I guess if if Dorit really did say that Kyle was putting on the tears just for, like, show, uh, that actually isn't great. And I don't know, like, what I'm missing because let's see, I'm trying to go back in my head. Sorry, I probably could have like prepped all this before I got on the microphone, but I wanted to chalk it out with you guys. So what was the season with Kathy and the tequila and Aspen and all that? Was that two? That would have been two seasons ago, right? And Doreen and Kyle had a fight in that one. That was a and a big fight, too, where the, the husbands had to come or at least Mauricio had to be like, OK, guys, you love each other. Relax. And. You know, remember what I'm talking about? And Kyle was really drunk. And I that I was like, oh, this is tequila for sure. She was crying. So they've had a lot of tension for a while, honestly. They've never talked about anything. And I feel like that is really what the issue is, that there's years of shit. And I just don't think Kyle really even likes Story. You know, she... I don't think she even liked her from the beginning, but I think that there was a convenience and 
then the thing with Lisa Vanderpump happened with the Lucy Lucy whatever thing. And so I feel like that bonded them and it made sense for them to be friends. But if you think back to when Kyle first met Dorit, she was very wary and weirded out because Lisa was parading Dorit around as if they'd been friends forever. Uh, when Lisa, Lisa gets caught a few times contradicting that because they go shopping, her and Dorit go shopping one time, and Lisa says in a confessional that she's, you know, it's so great getting to know Dorit better, or the more I get to know Dorit, the more I like her. So Kyle was wary of Dorit and felt like Lisa was sort of bringing her on as a bit of a prop, if you will, to kind of jab at Kyle. Kyle's also a bit paranoid about things like that and maybe read into it too much, but I actually don't think she's wrong. I do think that that was calculated on Lisa's part, for sure. So Kyle's always been wary. Then, Dorit's second season, Lisa turns on her and goes all, you know, love. I love Teddy. Teddy's the best. Teddy Bear and all that stuff. Uh, and then that would bond Kyle and Lisa. I mean, sorry, Kyle and Dorit. So when I'm trying to figure out like what really would have upset Kyle or Dorit, but Kyle, I can't really figure out exactly where it starts because the BravoCon thing has to just be like more of a cherry on top. You know, when they were filming, remember Dorit brought up Mauricio on camera and Kyle, they didn't film the, uh, reunion until January, late January of 2024. So after Kyle's Watch What Happens, or I mean, Amazon Live, which they talked about at the reunion. But Kyle brought, also brought up at the reunion, like, I didn't appreciate you bringing up Mauricio and my marriage on camera. And now you see, this is where it's tough for the audience to get on board with Kyle being upset about something like that, because we have been preaching to Kyle for so long, like, open up. Let us know what's going on. You're so fucking cagey about everything. I'm going to say something, too, and I, I rarely say shit like this about this type of thing, but you know who would benefit from ketamine therapy? Kyle. I feel like Kyle is holding on so tight to not looking inward at what really is upsetting her or how she really feels about things. And I've never done ketamine therapy, but from what I've heard, it helps you just to completely relax into whatever it is that you're needing to work through. And I think she could use that because Kyle doesn't open up. She's not open and honest, which is her favorite thing to say. She doesn't open up like that. And so even though Dorit was kind of not being a good friend, to Kyle, according to Kyle, by bringing up Mauricio on camera. As the audience, it's like, Kyle, it's hard to feel bad for you and be like, yeah, Dorit, that wasn't cool when we want you to talk about these things on camera. So it's not, that's not so simple and, and whatever for us. So Kyle's gripes are with Dorit seem to be like not following the rules and not um, whatever. So then when Dorit tries to say how she feels about it, Kyle's like, I have been a really good friend to you. Just because you say it doesn't make it true. And I'm like, well, you're kind of doing the same thing. Like you're sitting here telling Dorit that you've been a good friend. And just because she says it doesn't mean it's not true. Well, just because you say it doesn't mean it's true. Just because you say you've been a good friend. Uh, I, can't, I can't speak to how good of a friend she has been. I don't really know. I feel like we've seen them fight and bicker so much throughout the years. And we've seen Kyle be kind of shitty to her a lot in my opinion, when they've had disagreements. Um, I got I have to like go through the archives and I'm trying, I, I have vague memories of, wasn't there a, a fight when they were on a plane or something and then they had to discuss it again later and then it was at Kyle's house and then Kyle was being really mean to Dory. All these things are kind of blending together. But I, re I, I recall thinking many times that Kyle was not necessarily nice to Dory or that Kyle expects... Oh, I know what I'm thinking of, too. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of uh, at Erica's house when they had the horoscope reading guy and Dory was trying to talk about like how Kyle's relationship with Teddy feels like a bit favored or whatever. And Kyle was like, shut up. Stop talking. Stop saying it. I don't want to hear it. Be leave me alone. Remember? <laughs> I feel like that's exactly what she was talking like, too. Uh, so, yeah, I feel like over the years, it's been uh, kind of evident that Kyle 
And then Kyle has the nerve to say later in the episode that Dorit lacks accountability and self-awareness. She says when she goes to lunch with Sutton, I think it's in her confessional, she says that Dorit seemed to be completely oblivious to anybody else's feelings but her own. (laughs) I was like, so, (laughs) like, you kind of? No? Okay. And then when I don't like the way the way Kyle walked out, I really didn't like it. I really didn't like her walking out like I'm not going to do this. There's no talking to her. Also, I don't like how she keeps saying she said this to Sutton last season when she's like, "You're not even acting like yourself. What's wrong with you? You're not even acting like yourself. Who is this? What's wrong with you?" Okay, I don't know why that is your go-to line. Is it to is it to like throw the person off? Like, what's wrong with you? You're not even acting like yourself. According to who? According to you? Like, what the hell? Although Sutton was being insane in that scene last year, that that name him scene. I know it's iconic, but like I wanted to choke her. I was like, stop it. Stop saying name him. Let her talk. Uh, but, you know, Kyle's react. Both of them looked crazy in that scene, actually, because Kyle's eyes got all big and Sutton's eyes were like, name him. <laughs> it was a fucking unhinged scene. Uh, but yeah, I'm not liking Kyle's like, you're lucky I'm here attitude. And Erica walked over. I feel like Erica. Erica wants to. In the scene when when Erica and Dorit go to Bose's house. Oh, by the way, love Bose's assistant Nico. He, we need more of him. He was fun for sure. But at that scene in that in that lunch that they had, Dorit is going off about Kyle, and I know I can see Erica wanting so bad to agree. But she's like, I don't know if I have the energy to have another war going because I would love it if if Erica would just indulge it. But Erica is doing the math and she's like, I might kind of need Kyle. I don't know. It's just not smart for me to go against her. But I know I can tell that Erica agrees with what Dorit's saying. When when Dorit's like, there's a different set of rules. I can see Erica like, "Mm mm-hmm. And then just goes, she goes, I can see both of their their sides. I, I I see where both of them are coming from. But I feel like she's like, but Dorit is more correct here. But she just, she's like, I, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle. Whilst uh, they are, oh, at least while we're watching the scene at Bose's house, Bose is awesome too. Like really loved her event that she held and getting her backstory and stuff. So she's really cool. But while that's happening, Sutton and Kyle go to lunch and Sutton is just it's the way she it's the way she says things you know it's it's like this all knowing she's like Kyle it's time to file and it's like it's such a big thing to say to Kyle and like even if you may have a point and clearly in Kyle's confessional she says everyone is asking about filing so Sutton's not the only one like what are you gonna do and Sutton may prove to be right she she might completely prove to be right, but um, Kyle, Kyle really is super trusting. She is really trust. She's like everything's fifty fifty. He said in his book that if it weren't for me, he wouldn't have the agency or whatever else he says. And it does sound a little um, weak of an as, a, as in terms of an argument. Like once a divorce lawyer gets a hold of that, and let's say Mauricio decides he doesn't want to pay Kyle, whatever, you know, maybe it would it could get ugly. It could. Mauricio seems to be going through a whole thing, you know, like replacing the photo of him and Kyle with him and his dance partner from Dancing with the Stars, who he had like rumors of romance with. Like, whoa, dude. Now, was that in retaliation to all of the Morgan Wade Kyle photos and coverage? Like, was that what that was about? Was it retaliation? in that way. But Mauricio's on record saying he's, he knows nothing's going on there and that they just are friends and that there's no issues. But that could also just be him like talking and bullshitting. But that because that's such a move like that is a that's a choice. Um, so but though, if he is mad at if he is mad at Kyle, then that's even more reason for Kyle to file probably and just make sure she's covering herself, I think. Sutton may also just be being paranoid, but Sutton is also just like her approach to things. I noticed the difference in the way Sutton and Garcelle communicate and the way Kyle communicates with literally anyone. Kyle cannot handle any kind of teasing or blunt speaking. 
to her. <laughs> she gets she she's very sensitive. And Sutton and Garcelle will rip each other a little bit. And that's and that doesn't mean they're not friends. As where Kyle, you can't make fun of Kyle. You can't tease Kyle and you can't say you should file without her being like, why? That, that was I mean, she didn't make a huge deal out of it. Erica seemed to be really upset about Sutton doing it. And it, it it's it's pushy and it's but Jennifer Tilly in the after show, she it's like you just have to know that that's Sutton, I guess, because then Jennifer Tilly just makes a joke when when the producer's like, so when you guys went to lunch, you told Kyle she needed to file for divorce. And Jennifer Tilly just goes, can't leave you alone for a minute. So you just know that Sutton, Sutton, you're out of line. <laughs> Sutton doesn't fucking care, though. It's like, it was. I'm sure it's good advice, but also it's on camera advice. And that always is going to make Kyle, like, twitchy and, and weird. Hello, She's Speaking listeners. You know, for a lot of us, our hair is very important. And Lola V, which is Jennifer Aniston's award-winning hair care line, is incredible for saving your hair from the past and the future. Let me just say something. I've had major hair shedding, major hair loss, and I'm still recovering from it. So every strand of hair on my head must be as healthy as possible. And thanks to Lola V, it is. They are these little healthy strands of hair that are left in my head. The exfoliate and detox shampoo changed my hair in one use. And I'm not just saying that, okay? I would never lie about something this important. Lola V is powered by their naturally derived peptide bond builder known as B Pro 3 Bond Technology. It's derived from chia seeds and it's clinically proven to prevent, protect, and repair signs of aging and damage on the hair. So it combats damage right where it starts and then it guards against dryness and breakage while delivering high-performance results. And if we're talking gifts, the Ultimate Care Kit is a great idea. This collection features Jen's favorites, the Restorative Shampoo and Conditioner and the Allure Best of Beauty winning Glossing Detangler. These three products are Jen's essentials for visibly healthy, shiny hair. And with the kit, you'll save over 25%. The restorative shampoo and conditioner work together to strengthen hair with every wash, providing a remarkable 77% reduction in breakage after just one use. The glossing detangler is the ultimate multitasker. It's a detangler, a heat protectant, a frizz fighter, a shine enhancer, and a hydrator all in one. So you can solve all your hair problems in just a few spritzes. Or it's a great stocking stuffer. Unlock Jennifer Aniston approved hair at LolaV.com and celebrate the holidays with stronger, healthier hair. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code SHESPEAKS15 at checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E.com with promo code SHESPEAKS15. Please note you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Your hair will thank you. If you are shopping for the man in your life, whether that be your bestie or your boyfriend or your husband, I got a great gift idea that they'll actually use. The Chairman Pro Electric Foil Shaver from Manscaped. See, the Chairman Pro has that flex adjust technology, so the blades and the pivoting head adjust to every curve of the face. It's nice and gentle on the neck, even safe to use below the belt. And the Chairman Pro has not one but two interchangeable skin-safe blade heads. You got the skin-safe four-blade foil for when he wants these smooth as a baby's bottom type of thing. But then they also have the skin-safe stubble trimmer for when he wants to keep a little stubble but just clean it up. And the Chairman Pro is also waterproof. That's a major game changer. A lot of men prefer to shave in the shower. 
and you get up to 75 minutes of runtime on a single charge. So they have plenty of time to go from head to toe with that thing. Gift your man the ultimate grooming experience by Manscaped and get him the Chairman Pro package for the holidays. It's a thoughtful and practical gift that he'll actually use and love. Get 25% off plus free shipping with the code she speaks at manscaped.com. That's 25% off plus free shipping with the code she speaks at manscaped.com. Back to though, back to Bose's house. Dory is explaining the situation with the kids and how they're not telling the kids. But then when she explains why it's not such a big shock to them, it was a shock to us and to Erica. Because Dory said that, you know, PK had been drinking and they'd fight a lot. And when they'd fight, he'd leave for weeks. Oh, weeks, huh? And I guess that's true. We had heard about him in a hotel, staying in a hotel. and. There was truth to that, but they were able to kind of play it off as just a fight. But like, so that's why the kids are just like, oh, okay, it's more of the same with dad and needing to, you know, whatever. So that was, and Erica even said like how sad that she thought she had to go through that by herself. But also like you, you and we all, we've, I did it when I was in my relationship. I just stopped talking about my whole thing with anybody because when you say the things that are happening in your relationship out loud, you hear it, <laughs> you know, you know, like that doesn't sound good, right? That doesn't sound good. So yeah. But then, okay, Sutton plans a really cute surprise pizza and PJs party for Kyle with Kathy and Erica. And this whole thing was, it was cute. It was fun. It was innocent. It was sweet. Um, They get there and they just start making the pizzas and making a mess and it was cute. Uh, but Kathy, it's clear Kathy is just not like Kyle. Like they're not because Kathy thinks that making fun of Mauricio is going to be like because, you know, most women would would maybe like that. But uh, Kathy goes, Kyle, you look like you could be his daughter. He has aged. And she's like, "No, he looks he looks good. And then Kathy's like, wait, wait, wait. And then does the like pumping up iron thing. And. You you know Kathy's been making fun of Mauricio if that's what she's like. She's doing that shorthand like, uh, how about this? Uh, uh. Either Kyle's been joining in and making fun of him and now she's like, don't do that. I don't want it on camera. Or Kathy's just been doing that to, with anyone else who will listen, making fun of Mauricio. But Kyle was mortified and was like, uh, that doesn't make me feel good. And Kathy goes, oh, I thought it would. Oh, <laughs> thought it would. Sorry. Kathy, in her confessional, though, she said that I've heard that Mauricio is discussing Hilton and Highland and Rick on his show. And the advice I could give is move on. Ooh, ooh, OK, move on. Sutton then starts talking about how uh, she knows I've divorced a successful, powerful man. And then she looks at Erica and it's like, you know what I mean? And Erica, this is her tell, you guys, because I noted it. I can't remember whatever season number it was where all the shit was coming out with Tom and all that. She does something with her speech that is her tell that she's lying. She says, you know what I mean, Erica. And Erica says, my mistake was that I trusted too much. And she does a very pronounced, I'm going to pull a scene. It's It was when Lisa and Erica went to get drinks so that Erica could tell her bullshit story of why she left Tom and how I got out of the car and I said, I love you. And he said, thanks, hon. I picked up. She does a very affected way of speaking my uh, trusting too much. I swear, you guys, you'll start to notice it. You will. I promise. Because she's lying. Like, Erica has never been honest, which is also funny because, you know, <laughs> Erica, there's this there's this clip of an interview she did that's kind of going around. Everyone's talking about it, where Erica says that she thinks Sutton and Garcelle need to be more open about their lives. And I'm like, OK, fine. But girl, you have just continued to lie to us. First, you were lying when you were with Tom, saying he was the best man ever and you guys had this great relationship and blah, blah, blah. And then you left Tom because of the lawsuits and everything that was coming down the pike, but lied and said it was because you just haven't been happy. He was really mean. 
And then you also were like, but he also has dementia. So I left him in his worst possible time where he needed me the most. That's fine. Like you have, you're, don't even, just because your shit was forced upon you doesn't mean you get to get the like award for being open and honest about your life because you weren't. Your shit was just so big we couldn't contain it. But I dare you to bring up whatever it is you think Garcelle and Sutton aren't talking about because I just feel like they don't necessarily have a lot of drama going on in their lives. You know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, Kristen Doty is such an interesting, funny reality TV personality because she just naturally is messy and causes all kinds of shit. And I just don't think at least Garcelle is like that. Like, what's Sutton hiding? I would love to know. But I don't think that they're hiding anything. I just don't necessarily know if they have a lot of drama. But Erica, you don't get to stand on a, on a pedestal like, yeah, like me, like me being all open and honest. Like, girl, no, you are not. OK, I remember. All right. The last scene of this was the dinner with PK and Dorit. So now we're going to pick back up on my PK rant. OK. All right. So at this dinner, it is, according to Dorit's confessional, 24 to 48 hours after they released their statement. And he is standing up in front of her going, single PK. Ew. And he's obviously, well, maybe not obviously. I think through his actions, he's making it clear now that he doesn't like Dorit. He, she was shocked when he's like, I don't think we like each other. And she's like, wait a minute, you don't like me? <laughs> he's like, when you when you say so, no, what you don't like me? I don't like you. I sometimes I don't like you, and that's evident, clearly evident. But Dorit, you shouldn't like him. You should be disgusted with this man because after he asked you to quit your career to raise his kids, now he's telling you he was the prize. He was the global entrepreneur and you owe him and you made him feel, you made me feel less than? Who were you? That's what he's saying. It's given Andrew Tate light vibes. Like the woman respects the man. PK, sir, you had gambling debts that came back to bite you. You didn't properly file your taxes in 2015 and you met Dorit in 2013 or 2014 or something like that. So, you affected her life, her finances, her future, her children. And Dorit got snappy because I'm sorry, that's stressful. And PK, you were drinking too? You were drinking on top of that problematically? And you're telling Dorit that she was the she should be kissing your ass, basically. I I couldn't believe the nerve. She quit her fucking design business. And when she was trying to launch Nava, remember, she wanted to call her swimwear line Nava. He came in and changed the name and the price point and the number of pieces in the collection while she was on a cast trip in New York City. He's a, I, I this man, I really, I, he is the epitome of insecure. He's a charlatan. He has no real skill. We've only known him as Boy George's manager. He's tried to launch businesses. They've all fallen flat from what we've seen, at least. What does he do? Entrepreneur of what? I'm so sorry. So Dorit, though, is in a position where she quit all of this stuff for him, and she can't admit to herself that he's not the man he promised he was and never has been. He was good at faking it. But while you were thinking he was out there being the big entrepreneur man, he was gambling and losing money and taking out loans and not paying them back. And yeah. So she is yet to, like, she shouldn't want to be with him. She shouldn't be waiting around for how PK feels because that's what it feels like she's doing. And he's trying to say you were so mean. You would say these real below the belt things. And I'm not going to hold that against Dory at all. Because you know what, PK? She was pissed. And she had a reason to be pissed. And now that you're armed with your AA jargon, you think you can outsmart Dorit 
and say that she was actually just putting me down all the time. And you have no idea what I was really going through with Dorit. When That's an easy one to do, by the way, because we've all seen Dorit be really fucking annoying. So that's fine. It's easy to go there. But I'm not falling for this bullshit. I can guarantee when you were drunk, you said shit that, oh, it'll, she'll never, ever forget. But you don't even remember saying it because that's what it's like to deal with an alcoholic. I've been in many relationships with many alcoholics. So him sitting there acting like he's so excited to be single and like, actually, the more I think about it, you didn't change at all. I'm the one who did the one thing you asked me to do, which was which was stop drinking. I did that. And she's like, so you're saying I didn't even change. You didn't. You didn't change. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. You also, you guys should maybe have been in therapy to work through it. But at this point now, no. PK needs to go find some 23-year-old idiot who's not going to question him. And someone reminded me that PK was married with children before he met Dorit. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is a pattern where he got bored of her and she started asking too many questions, you know, about like, hey, what are you going to do to help the family? And he was like, okay, relax. So I'm going to go find some young one who believes my bullshit. And he takes her out of the work field. Her she was she loved designing. And then when he's he's saying, I helped your ambitions, even. You did? Because you fucked Beverly Beach over, because Nava is a way better name for a swim line than Beverly Beach. Oh my God. Him and Mauricio are really, really epitomizing midlife crisis shit. What else do I have in my notes here? <laughs> like so much shit that I wanted to say about him. I just like went off, didn't even refer to those notes. What else did he say that pissed me off? Hold on. Oh, he goes, the reality is you came to me a very, very different girl. That's how he started that speech. It was me who was the global entrepreneur. No, she had a career. She had a business and you wanted her to quit. And she did because she fell for your bullshit. When he says the part about how she made him feel less than, for some reason, that makes Dory hear him. And she says, she goes, you know, I've, I've, I've heard it yelling and screaming and I'm a man. Oh, I'm a man. Oh, drunk. I'm a man. Okay, you respect me. I'm a man. You're a fucking man that has got them in the hole. Like, your house is in foreclosure. What are you bragging about? If the one thing you brought to the table was your business acumen, well, <laughs> look at it now, sir. All right. Dorit says something about how they're, you know, we're talking five times a day. And he goes, yeah, but we won't be. And she's like, wait, 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 hold on. This is a separation more so than she even realized. I think she thought that it was the separation, like getting out of the house and then they would still chat and like still be together or something. And PK is making it clear, like, no, 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 no. I can't stand you. And I will be ignoring your phone calls unless it's vital that we speak. And it's about the children. Because I don't like you. And Dorit is like over here going, what? No, Dorit, it's time for, hopefully, I don't know what we're going to see this season from her, but hopefully she figures that out and is just like done with him. Because I'm fucking done with him. He is so gross. He has been mediocre and bullshitting us for seasons. And now I'm just going to embrace the fact that I I didn't even like him when he was he had that viral funny moment with the four of them making fun of Tom and Erica. I even then I was like, I still don't mm -mm, I still don't like you. So bye, dude. Um, yeah. OK, so that was the end of that episode. And he cuts off Dorit. Dorit tries to is like trying to figure something out. And he goes, OK, babe, let's just go. Like he cuts her off. Maybe it's editing, but like he doesn't listen to her side. He's on this kick of like men need to be heard now, not women. Like that's the vibe he's giving me. So bye, dude. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, keep your eye out. I'm going to be posting another one of those like like midweek check-ins with the, all the social media posts that I had, uh, I've already done and like just kind of put them all together. I did that last week too. And a lot of people said they liked it. So uh, I'll be posting that probably tomorrow. And Salt Lake City, I will get up hopefully Friday. Um, and happy Thanksgiving for those who celebrate. And I love you, mean it, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to She's Speaking with Emily Hanks. This show is produced 
hosted and edited by me, Emily, and brought to you in partnership with Cloud10 Media. If you are looking for bonus content, check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. To show some support, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Another free way to support the pod, please rate and or review on whatever platform you listen. It's free and it helps the algorithm or something. You can also head to buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks and buy me a coffee or two. Make sure you're following me on all social medias. I am She's Speaking with Emily Hanks across all platforms, threads, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. That's it. Thank you guys. See you soon.